Welcome YouTube animators and artists. If you've been following this channel for a while, you know by now that one of the things I like to do is to add realistic animations to movie clips or other film items. In this video, I'm going to show you how to animate an image and add that animation to an existing movie or film clip. But first, remember to like, subscribe, and ring the notification bell, which will help me to continue bringing you these tutorial videos. So how do I make these videos? Let's break it up into a few steps. Step one, storyboard. Decide what your animation is going to be and what video you are going to insert your animation into. For this example, I'm using a clip from Sony Pictures' new movie, Barbie, and I'm going to make and insert a realistic 2D animation of a T-Rex dinosaur trampling onto the scene and eating Barbie out of the clip. Step two, collect the media. Obtain the movie footage you want to use and obtain the image you would like to animate. To collect the movie or film footage, you can either use something you already have on hand or you can use video capture software, which is the method that I prefer to use. Now there are a lot of options when it comes to software, but the most affordable version I have found is NCH software. It is incredibly affordable and it does not require a subscription. Some NCH software can be glitchy, but the video capture software has been very reliable in my experience. Once you have the capture software, find the video or movie you want to use and capture the desired clip and save the file. Next, find the image that you are going to animate and save it as a file as well. You now have all the footage needed to complete the project. Step three, edit and prep. For video editing, I also use NCH software. The video editing is more glitchy, but it gets the job done, and again, it is one of the few products that does not require a subscription. It is best to edit your movie clip before you make your animation, because this will dictate when your animation will interact with the clip. For example, in this video, the T-Rex will enter the scene when the camera is capturing the entire beach and ocean from behind Barbie. This cut allows for the largest viewer perspective to incorporate the majority of the T-Rex animation. The other cuts are generally too small to capture anything more than the T-Rex's head or jaws at the moment Barbie is consumed. The edited clip needs to end at the exact frame that Barbie will disappear from the scene. Once you have established that frame, take a snapshot of the frame using the editing software's snapshot feature and save the snapshot file. Make sure the snapshot has a resolution and aspect ratio consistent with the screen view in your animation software. It needs to fit perfectly so the animation can be tailored to the movie clip without losing perspective. 1280 by 720 works fine in Moho. This snapshot will be used extensively throughout the project. Next, to prep the image for animation, you will need a photo editor. I use NCH PhotoPad Editor. This step can be one of the most tedious parts depending on how realistic you want your animation to be. If all you want to do is a simple animation where the image is warped or reshaped, then you're done, and the image can be used as is. But if you want a more realistic animation, as I'm showing you here, the image will need to be decomposed into a subset of separate images accounting for each movable part of the character. Some anatomy knowledge can pay off here. Obviously, we want the T-Rex jaw to move since it is going to eat Barbie, but also the T-Rex is going to be trampling onto the scene, so we need to decompose all of the other movable parts as well. Using the Select Polygon tool, we will cut out, we will cut out the entire dinosaur except for the desired movable part. Define the border of the body part with the Polygon tool, keeping in mind that the body part will have to overlap with the other adjacent body parts. For the animation to work properly, it is best to cut out each part, including the joints that they rotate on. This means that the saved images of two adjacent body parts will both contain the same joint on their own image. There's one thing to note here since the animation is two-dimensional. Once you have cut out the images for one leg and one arm, you do not need to cut out the other leg and arm, because you can duplicate the ones you already have and place them either in front of the dinosaur or behind the dinosaur accordingly when the images are recomposed. Make sure you save the images as PNG files so that they are transparent except where the body part lies on the image. Once you've completed this step, you'll have a folder of images that are ready to be recomposed in the animation software. Step four, import and rig the character. This step is where your image will come to life. 
I use Moho Pro, and I would argue that this is the best software for this type of work. And again, Moho Pro can be purchased without a subscription, so all of the software I use in this tutorial is yours once you purchase it. You can import all of the images at once, and as you can see, the dinosaur is reconstructed simply by importing all of the images. Now the fun begins. Rigging characters is often the most tedious part of this process, but also the most fun if you do it right. Remember when you are doing any character setup in Moho, it has to be done at frame zero. To get the most realistic result, first you'll want to apply a smart warp layer to each image layer before rigging the bone structure. The software may or may not associate the warp layer to the image layer. So once the warp layer is added, test the association at frame 1. The points should distort the image when they are moved. If they don't, you need to open the image layer, go to the image tab, and check the warp using bones box, and select the correct smart warp layer at the bottom. You need to do this for each body part. At frame 0, fit the points to the shape as good as possible, and add more reference points as needed. You may also want to add reference points inside the body part depending on the effect you are trying to achieve. In the case of this dinosaur, I want it to look like the skin stretches and contracts as body movement occurs. So I will add reference points inside the body part for some of the images, namely the torso, tail, and legs because this is where the majority of the movement will occur and where skin stretching would be seen on a moving animal. Most of this effect will be achieved by animating the points that are on or near the joints of the bone structure. You can easily see in the finished product how the skin stretches and contracts as the bones are manipulated. Keep in mind that the more points there are, the more taxing it is on your equipment, but the effect is definitely worth some extra points if you can manage it. Next. You will add bones to the character and rig the reference points to the bones. The better you cut out the body parts at the pivot areas, the easier the rigging process will be. This is why some anatomy knowledge is helpful. For additional help on rigging, I will post another rigging video for beginners. Sketch out your bones according to the creature's anatomy and how you believe the parts will rotate. Once the bones are placed, it is time to bind the points to the bones. In Moho, there is a Bind Layers tool and a Bind Points tool. The Bind Layer tool is great for simple animations, but for this project, we're going to use the Bind Points tool. This will allow the bones to manipulate other areas of the dinosaur as needed, as in the skin stretching effect. Working with one bone at a time, select all of the points that the bone needs to move, and bind them to the bone. Rigging can be tricky, so you may need to add or take away reference points as you work your way through all of the bones and points. Keep in mind that all of the points need to be bound to something, otherwise a piece of the dinosaur won't move with the animation. Once all of the bones and points are accounted for, you can start testing the rig. Manipulate all of the bones to see if you missed anything or to fix anything that malfunctioned in the process. At this point, you may notice that the dinosaur doesn't move as realistically as you would like and that the skin stretching effect isn't very good. This is okay because you can clean things up with some final touches in the rigging process. Moho allows you to create animation actions to clean up the movement of the body parts. Start the final touches by adding the necessary actions for each bone. Actions allow you to specify how the points move when the bone is manipulated, so you can clean things up and build the movement effects that you want. Once you have completed the actions for all of the bones, set the bone constraints for each bone. This makes it easier to animate and prevents the character from bending in undesired ways. While you're at it, you may want to mark the independent angle setting for some of the bones, like the tail bones, so the tail doesn't move up and down when the dinosaur body is manipulated. Finally, add a target bone to the second to last bone on each foot. This allows you to designate when you want the dinosaur's feet to be stationary during stomping or stepping, and it makes the animation process much easier and realistic. Step 5. Animate the character and create the props. The fun continues as you bring the character more and more to life by adding movement. But first, remember the snapshot we took during Step 3? Here's where you will use it. Import the snapshot into your animation software. You can now use the snapshot as a background reference for your animation. And you know exactly where Barbie will be at the precise moment that she will disappear into the dinosaur's mouth. Manipulate the bones at various keyframes throughout the timeline to animate the character. 
I will post a timeline animation video for beginners if you want more in-depth information on animating and working with the timeline. As you manipulate the character, be sure to make good use of the target bones at the feet. It makes the animation process much more efficient. Complete the animation up to the frame where Barbie will disappear from the snapshot. Now it's time to create the props that we will need for compositing the final project. Go back to the photo editor and import the snapshot. A lot of material needs to be cut out of the snapshot or modified for the final video. First, we need to cut everything out of the snapshot except Barbie so we can use her as a prop that interacts with the dinosaur when she gets eaten. We also need to modify the snapshot so Barbie is removed from the scene after the dinosaur eats her. The best way to do this is using the clone stamp tool. This allows you to paint over Barbie using other portions of the snapshot as your paint. Finally, we need to cut other props out of the snapshot that will appear in the foreground in front of the dinosaur. This includes the umbrella and potentially some of the other characters. Now we can go back to the animation and finish animating the dinosaur. The only prop that we need in the animation is Barbie since she is interacting with the dinosaur. The rest of the props will be overlays in the video editor. Import the Barbie prop PNG file into Moho. We will go back to the frame just before the dinosaur's jaws close on Barbie. The Barbie prop image will appear at the first frame the dinosaur's teeth pass in front of Barbie. This will be the same frame that the Barbie in the original footage disappears from the video, giving the illusion that the Barbie from the movie is picked up by the jaws of the dinosaur, when in fact it switches to a prop in the animation. Now the dinosaur animation can be finished. Animate the dinosaur swallowing Barbie on the timeline. If you like, you can also add bones or an image warp layer to Barbie and animate her movements as she is consumed. A nice final touch for the animation is adding the dinosaur shadow. You can do this by duplicating the dinosaur layer as a reference layer and scaling the layer upside down. But don't forget to colorize the layer as black, otherwise the shadow will have all the colors of the dinosaur. Once the animation is complete, export the animation as a PNG video so everything except the dinosaur and the Barbie prop is transparent. Export the shadow layer as a separate file. And don't forget to delete or make invisible the snapshot background from the animation before you export it. Step 6. Compositing and Final Touches Import the Dinosaur Barbie animation and the Shadow animation into the video editor. Import all of the remaining props and also the modified snapshot that Barbie was removed from. Go to the last frame of the edited footage and add the Barbie-less snapshot. When you play the video, you can see Barbie disappear. If you want, you can add a looping portion of the movie footage where the other characters are waving to make it look like the movie never stopped when the T-Rex enters the scene. All you have to do is put the looping layer over the snapshot layer and mask Barbie out of the looping layer. The Barbie-less snapshot fills the masked portion of the looping layer. Next, add the dinosaur animation layer and align it so that the Barbie prop appears at the very frame where the Barbie-less snapshot takes over. Then add all the other prop layers on top. This is how the dinosaur appears behind other objects in the video. Finally, add the shadow animation layer on top of everything to make the effect that the dinosaur towers over everything in the movie. And that is the final product. Hope you enjoyed this video. Visit my channel for more animation videos and tutorials.